Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity for April 2022. This month was really insane, so many great games that were released for the first time and a bunch of them out of early access. It was probably one of the toughest months to stick with just this list of 10 games. Normally in these videos I include one VR game, but this month there were so many awesome regular games that I didn't include a single one for VR. On the one hand, this is great for players, you've got tons of awesome games on all kinds of genres for you to play and enjoy, but also it makes it very tricky for developers. So all of these games are your competition, so you really need to bring your best and have something truly unique if you want to stand out. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Also, do you want to get hired for your Unity or game dev skills? Check out Talent at SeriesGameJobs.com, which is a new service where companies approach great candidates with offers. It's easy to sign up, and you can connect your existing LinkedIn or portfolio sites to show employers. Check it out with the link to get hired or to find talent. Alright, so starting off at number 10 with what is considered to be one of the most unique games of all time, which has just been remastered, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. I have to say I haven't played it yet, it's always been on my list but I never got around to it. One of the benefits of waiting so long before playing certain games is if you wait long enough the game gets remastered and it's better and with more content. If you've never heard of it, like I said it's an extremely unique game. It's a story-based comedy game with a very interesting design, lots of things change, everything is very mysterious and all of your choices matter. It features an excellent narrator, talking and correctly reacting to all of your choices. Basically, if you want to be a good game designer and explore everything that games can be, then this game is pretty much required to be studied and experienced. So with that, I really need to find time to go through it myself and this remaster seems like the perfect time to do it. Then here's a pretty unique one, a card-based village builder called Stacklands. It's a very unique merging of genres, and based on the reviews, that combination of those two genres really works. You have cards representing all kinds of things in city builder games, so you have villagers, food, research and so on. By dragging cards on top of others, you can then take special actions, like for example drag a villager on top of a berry bush to start harvesting berries. Then you drag the berry card onto the villager in order to feed them. The visuals are also great, they're very chill, very inviting with some satisfying sound effects. Also like other city builders, you have some enemies which you must defend and find research cards to progress. So all in all, it's a really unique idea and at a pretty cheap price point, and it's already got over 1500 overwhelmingly positive reviews, so it seems that people really like it. This one is made by Sock Pop Collective, which is a group that has been building some tiny interesting games for quite a long time. Their Steam bundle has 93 items, and I think this one is their most successful one yet. Then if you're looking for a sandbox building game with a focus on nautical gameplay, then check out Sea of Craft. I especially love the building scene, the water parts to give way to your construction area. It's a simple effect but looks really awesome, really unique. There are plenty of sandbox builder games out there, but most of those are on land, so this one brings something fresh to the genre by keeping the gameplay mostly in the water. That change is not just a visual change, it has serious impacts in terms of physics, buoyancy and much more. Although it also supports land buildings and even some buildings. Features lots of unique missions to complete, explosive PvP battles, and of course, tons and tons of parts for you to use in building your ship. So you can go ahead and build something peaceful, or you add some cannons and a bunch of hammers. Then here's a very silly, very fun game, Nightfall A Daring Journey. It's a medieval game, but with guns and some horse drifting. It's very silly, but it doesn't look great. It's made with co-op in mind, with up to 24 players in teams of two. You go from village to village, drift your horse during the day and look for shelter during the night. The goal is to get to the castle, but as you get closer and closer, the towns become fewer and fewer. The first team to get to the town gets access to some better weapons, which you need to defend from other players. So it has a certain battle royale charm to it. Looks like the perfect game to exemplify how stylish you can go with all of your games. If you do it right, you can make something silly and stylish, but still makes sense. It's also pretty cheap and I think that helped it finding success with having already over 1200 positive reviews. Looks like a great game to pick up with your friends and just have a good time. Then for one that just came out of early access after over a year, Warpips. It's an RTS slash tower defense game. You've got lots of upgrades and lots of units to compose your army. There's an entire world to conquer. It's got quite a lot of variety in the maps. I remember seeing this one back when it launched into early access and it seems like they used that time to really flash out the game. It's got a really interesting visual style, all of the units are in 2D pixel art, but the world, vehicles, all of it is in 3D, so that makes it for a very unique look. I'm a fan of RTS games, although usually I don't have time to get really deep, 
This one seems like it has quite a lot of depth, but also due to the interesting mix of tower defense and RTS, it also looks like it's easier to get started. Either way, it's a really interesting new unique take on the RTS genre, so if you like that, definitely give it a shot. And up next, Car Detailing Simulator. I have to say, one of the things that I love is just washing things. Watching something really dirty and cleaning it up and fixing it all up is one of the things that is immediately appealing to me. This one is obviously all about cars. You can clean both the exterior and the interior, use a variety of tools to get the job done. So you can use some basic soap, you can brush the leather and clean everything to perfection. And on top of that, you can also paint some cars. As usual, you start on a pretty crappy garage, just detailing some cheap cars. Then you upgrade more and more onto better and better cars and onto a better and better garage. The reviews all mention just how relaxing the game is, so if that's what you're looking for, then this looks like a great entry in the so-called job simulator genre. Then up next, here we have a highly anticipated sequel, Rogue Legacy 2. This one's actually quite interesting. The original game was made with XNA, but they switched to Unity for this one. The original Rogue Legacy is also another great game that I've had on my list for ages, but I haven't played it yet. Basically, it's a roguelike action platformer. The main twist is when your character dies, you take control of one of their descendants. It's a really awesome, really unique mechanic to let you keep upgrades over time. Although some descendants also have some negative traits, which really helps make each run very unique. This sequel is just bigger and better. You've got tons of biomes, lots of variety. It only just came out and already has thousands of very positive reviews. So if you like the original, it looks like you're going to love this one. Then over here is another sandbox game that looks really interesting, it's called Action Sandbox. It's in 2D, which actually makes it pretty unique, most sandbox games nowadays are in 3D. Features lots of jiggly physics and has an emphasis on combat and powerful weapons. Also has quite a lot of nature elements, so you can build some flamethrowers or some ice shields. It's also got integrated workshop support, so if you like to explore what other players can make, then you can give this a look. And up next, here is one that I'm not quite sure how to pronounce, Winkeltier, the little shop, something like that. It's all about building and running your own fantasy shop, you buy low and sell high. So you start off simple, just buying some cheap items and selling them for a quick profit. Then you move on to actually creating things. You can farm and craft some items, use the proceeds and keep expanding your shop. Decorate your shop to make it really appealing to all of your visitors. And as your shop grows, you can hire workers who really help you out. It's out now after three years of early access. It had tons and tons of updates during that time. The developers are very responsive and the reviews are all very positive. I haven't played any shop simulator or tycoon game in quite a while, so I'd like to find the time to give this one a shot. And finally, at number one for my personal pick of the month, it's another one that just came out after a very successful time in early access. It's Dorf Romantic. It's a peaceful building strategy game. You have a bunch of tiles given to you, kind of like cards from a deck and you place them down in the world. Different tiles have different things, so some have rivers, others have towns, windmills, forests. The gameplay is simple, but there is a nice strategy layer. Some tiles are best placed near others, giving you bonus points for making larger villages or completing some train tracks. As the world gets bigger, you explore different unique biomes and pre-placed objects show up with some unique tasks for you to complete. Or you can really just play to relax. The game has a very calming atmosphere, there are no disasters, no enemy attacks, just a nice world and some gorgeous visual. And thanks to how it's all procedurally generated, you can always get a brand new experience. Basically, this looks like a great game to play for 10 minutes every once in a while when you feel stressed. Just do a quick playthrough and you'll be much more relaxed. It's also another great example of how game design is always evolving and even with thousands of games coming out every month, there are still games that feel refreshingly unique. It is now fully released out of early access and the over 10,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews can't possibly be wrong. Alright, so that's 10 awesome new games made with Unity launched in April 2022. Check out the phone playlist to see some more awesome games made with Unity and let me know in the comments what you've been playing. Alright, hope that's useful, check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.